tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. Oh. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy. the Lord really is our strength. And if you are a believer and this is Holy Week, your joy has to be through the roof. And if you're not a believer, this is your week to become a believer. Guys, this is Holy Week. I'm Amy Schaefer. I'm here with Tom and Sydney. I like that. If, if you're not a believer, this is the time to become a believer. 
And we've got a great program for you. You just heard Jean Watson. We're going to be hearing more from her, one of our favorites. But we're also going to be sharing in communion today. I always get a blessing, guys, when I, when I have this opportunity to share in communion and to, and to break bread with my brothers and sisters. And Jesus said to do this in remembrance of him. And we know that that's a, it's a symbol. It represents his, his body and blood. But there's also something powerful and, and the presence of God is always there when we take communion. So you're going to want to get a little, uh, some kind of juice, a little piece of bread, whatever you have, and you can join us in communion later. And you know, one thing that's really interesting about communion is it is, has a tie to Passover and the Seder. And so coming up later in the show, I'm just going to give you a little history lesson and understanding about the connection between Passover, the Seder meal, and communion and how it is all linked to Yeshua. And you know, today I just am so excited because there's so many people around the world, millions around the world that are both Jews and Christians that are celebrating Passover. And you know, Amy, I know you've had a chance to go to Israel and all things truly point to Jesus. Oh my gosh. It, it, First of all, I brought you a picture to show you as you're getting your communion elements together. We want to give you a little time because we want you to share in this moment with us. But today would actually be what we would call Monday Thursday. And you can kind of see me walking in the background. But this is the upper room in Jerusalem. Wow. This is the room where Jesus and his disciples would come. They would have dinner together where Jesus would wash their feet where they would sit there and they would talk about, like Sydney said, the Passover lamb. And here they have the lamb of God sitting at the table with them. He knows what's about to happen. He's read it in scriptures. He's explained it to the disciples. There's no backing out. And today, there's no backing out. This is the day where he is breaking the bread with the disciples, where he is partaking of the blood and oh my gosh, woo! I mean, Can this you is really, no, I mean, it's incredible. And this is really the beginning of his, his real passion. You know, the, 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 everything that we celebrate, we, we obviously celebrate his resurrection, but we all also celebrate and mourn both his death, his taking of our sins on the cross. And this is the beginning of all that beginning to happen. And it's really something that, that we, we have to be, you know, guys, it's, it's, we're not somber because we're, ho we're joyful, but yet it's understanding the incredible sacrifice Jesus made for us. You know, as you're talking, Tom, it just reminds me of a moment. I remember I was in an intense moment of prayer and just in my prayer closet and just seeing the vision of Jesus like hanging on the cross that I just like wept and just so overcome with emotion just to, I don't think we can ever really truly fathom and understand what he did for us. Mm -hmm. But just to take that moment and to pause and to realize the death that he had how excruciating, how painful, how bloody, how ugly it is, how people were mocking and laughing and all of those things. And he did it for you and for me and for all of us so that we would have eternal life, that we would have an abundant life, that we would have victory. And so just today, you know, as we are taking this time on hope today to really pause and to honor and to celebrate what Jesus, Yeshua did on the cross is like, we just invite all of you just to take moments to take him in and just to understand what he did for us. This is truly, truly, I feel like such a holy day. This is when everything changed, the world changed and that we were able to be grafted in and all of our lives have been changed forever because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. That's absolutely true. And we expect that we're going to meet with the Lord here today. And, and you know, if you or one that your heart maybe doesn't have a song. We've got a song from Gene Watson right now and it's called For Songless Hearts.
shoes are all worn low. Far enough, you cannot say. Just past those clouds, he comes for you. You know when he was there. Cornerstone Television has believed in the power of prayer since its inception 44 years ago. We invest heavily in our prayer line to provide you with 24-7 personal prayer, knowing it brings breakthrough, healing, and wisdom. Last year alone, we received over 65,000 prayer calls. And if you have partnered with us, thank you so very much. And when you give this month, I am so excited to share with you my new book, Praying on Another Level. It's a 30-day journal to take your prayer life to a new dimension in God. You see, prayer is how we separate good ideas from God ideas. It's how we unlock the door to revelation, and it's where we get our strength to build up our spirit man to hear from God throughout our day. All that and so much more. So call us now at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org forward slash donate to request your copy. It is time to take your prayer life to another level. It's Monday, Thursday. We are getting ready to partake of communion together. Get your elements together right now. Start to prepare your heart and in your mind. And just to lay a foundation, I just wanted to read the Apostles' Creed. Now, this is something that all denominations, we all agree on the Apostles' Creed. Let's read it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of a Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Universal Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And everybody said, Amen. 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 There's so much truth in there, so much that's so good. And we want to we want to take time now for communion. So if you could get your elements, get a piece of bread, a little bit of juice. And uh, and, you know, Jesus, as he as he was in that upper room, eating a meal with the people he loved, the people he was closest to, he loved everyone. But these were the ones that had traveled with him. These are the ones that he was close to. And he took a piece of bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat of this. And, and he, he, he told them to do that. So why don't we, do we just take a moment? Let's take that piece of bread and let's just think for a moment of his great sacrifice of the breaking of his body. And Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, thank you for your willingness to take our sins upon yourself and that your body would be broken on the cross for us in your great love. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray, amen. So let's take and remember and eat the bread now. <clears throat> And by his stripes, we are healed. And now we partake of the blood of Christ. And because of the blood, we're forgiven. Because of the blood, we'll have eternal life. Because of the blood, we experience the forgiveness of God. And because of the blood, we can forgive others. Mm -hmm. So Father, we just thank you today as we partake of the blood. It says in the word that you don't remember our sins as far as the east is from the west. They've been covered and washed away white as snow. So Father, today we thank you for the price that was paid, for the blood that was shed, for the atonement of our sins and for the forgiveness of our sins. Today we stand guilt-free, shame-free and forgiven because of what Jesus did for us. So today, sir, we honor you and we think about you and we reverence you and we're in awe of what you did for us. In Jesus' name, partake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And you know what we just did? The communion has connections to what millions of Jews and Christians around the world that they're doing today and that's commemorating Passover today. You know, Passover is the biblical holiday celebrating God delivering the Israelites out of Egypt. And every year, families around the world gather together to remember the event through a Seder. Maybe it's a term you're familiar with. Maybe you've even participated in, with, in your family and with your community. And one of the customs involved in the Seder is called the Afi Komen. And this is a picture of it right here. Now, during the Seder, they offer two cups of wine before and after the meal. And in between the wine being offered, there's a pouch on the table, like you see right there, that has three layers of matzah, which is unleavened bread. And during this time, the father of the house removes the middle layer of the unleavened bread, breaks it and ha puts half of it in the pouch. And the other half is wrapped in a white cloth, hidden and buried. The hidden place where it's buried is called the afikomen. And after dinner is served, the dirt comes out last and the afikomen is supposed to be eaten for dessert, but it's hidden. So the children have to go and they find it. And when they do find it, they give it to their father and each family member gets a chance to eat it. Well, you know, in ancient Jewish writings, they said that the Passover lamb must be eaten at the night of the Seder because there are no more lambs that are served at the Seder. And the Afikomen points to Jesus, Yeshua, who was our Passover lamb. And you know, one thing as I was just praying and I was just seeking the Lord, he dropped in my spirit about the Afikomen and how it connects and relates to this moment and today. And you know, we're talking about the Afikomen, that it's eaten afterwards. And then God put in my spirit and put in my heart that Yeshua wants to be the one that comes after in the story of your life. You know, the Bible says that God knows our beginning from our end, our end from the beginning. And today, Yeshua is standing at the door, knocking at your heart. And maybe you've been looking, maybe you've been searching for truth for somewhere, exploring different religions, maybe new age, astrology, yoga. Maybe you're searching for that inner peace that you're looking for. And guess what? It isn't in rituals and activities. It's in a person and that person 
is Jesus. And I just want to take a moment to encourage you today. Maybe you've stumbled upon hope today, that you started watching, you wanted to hear what we're saying, that you've been listening to, we've been talking about the Apostles' Creed and doing communion, but there's still a part of you that feels distant, disconnected, and far away from God. Maybe you've dibbled and you've dabbled in different things. But I just want to tell you today that this moment in history, this Passover, this Monday, Thursday, the day where Jesus, he didn't back away. He didn't say, I'm not gonna die. He went to die on the cross for you and for me. He bore all of our sins, all of our iniquities, all of the things that we have done, all of our shame, all of our pain. This is the day he knew that he was gonna go forth and he was telling his disciples he was going forth to do this for us. This is a moment and this is why we simply exist on hope today is to tell you about the best breaking news story that ever happened in the world. No matter what's going on in the news right now, the biggest story that today is the day in history that we get to commemorate and remember what Jesus did, the decision he made for us. And we just invite you today, if you've never made that decision, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day. There's nothing that you've done that can push you so far away from God. Maybe you've tried other gods, but guess what? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to God, the creator of the universe, Yahweh, through Yeshua. Only Yeshua is the way. And when you accept Yeshua into your life, you are forgiven and you have eternal life and life begins to look differently. You go from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So if that's you today, why don't you give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. And we have prayer partners that are standing by that will walk you through that process and will tell you ways to get connected to a local body and to a local church. Jesus is our Passover lamb. He is the Afi Komen. He is that hidden thing that you've been looking for and you've been waiting for. And today is the day we want you to know him. And right now we're gonna end our show, our program today with another song with Jean Watness, Agnes Day. Oh,